people are multitasking. They are watching a game, and then there's a live feed of conversation. Coming up on this week's Fever Film Room, we're joined by the president. Lisa Borders joins us to give a report on the state of the league. And Borders goes in-depth on her ongoing efforts to improve the league's visibility. And what does Borders think of players like Tamika Catchings joining front offices around the WNBA? All that and more is coming up right now. Hello and welcome into a special edition of the Fever Film Room. Pat Boylan alongside WNBA president Lisa Borders. Always good to have you around. I know this is year two for you. In what ways do things feel different from year number one? So they feel more accelerated, Pat. Things feel like they're moving at lightning speed, just like the speed of our game. It's wonderful. Things are going really, really well. Excited about all 12 of our teams. Indy first among equals. Another stop for you here in Indianapolis. What do you enjoy most about your trips here to Indiana? Eating. No, <laughs> just kidding. I enjoy the basketball here. This is a basketball city, a basketball state. So to get to watch our players perform on the hardwood, there's nothing better. Things have changed a lot in your time here in this position, and one of the most notable has been you can watch a lot of the WNBA games now live and free on Twitter. Absolutely. A, a fantastic way, I know, to get eyeballs on your product. What are the biggest takeaways now that we've had a handful of games of those so far? Well, that nearly a million people are watching on Twitter on a regular basis, and clearly people are multitasking. They are watching a game, and then there's a live feed of conversation going mm -hmm. on simultaneously. So you get real-time reaction to what's happening on the court. You get comments about the league, about the teams that are playing, but a lot of the fans are really interested in engaging with one another. So that's the platform that is ubiquitous. We have a global game that we play. So we're looking at 40% domestic and 60% international national in terms of viewers, a million people. That speaks volumes for the demand for our product, particularly women's basketball. And another way that you've looked, I know, to grow the game is in the fantasy sports realm. And with yeah. this FanDuel agreement, it allows uh, players to play one day fantasy games and now do that with the WNBA. Uh, how has that helped the league's exposure? You know, it's terrific. It's a whole new group of people who are interested in our game. They must learn who our players are in order to select the teams to play in the fantasy game. So it's driving more interest, driving more awareness about our teams, our players, and our league. So it's options. This is America. We offer options for everything, whether we're talking about smorgasbord and eating or whether we're talking about playing sports. So FanDuel and Twitter are sort of a nod to the 21st century and how people are going to consume our game. From an on-court perspective, the playoffs last year took a fairly significant change in yeah. playoff format. A couple of uh, win and move on type of situations right off the bat in those first two rounds. You've gotten to see it just one time, which I know is, is a fairly small sample size, but yeah. what did you think so far and what are your thoughts as it relates to the playoffs going forward? It was completely unique to anything we or perhaps other sports leagues have done. So we love leading, mm -hmm. leading by example, being innovative, keeping it fresh. The one and done format gives a sense of urgency. You don't bring your A game, you better bring your A plus game because if you, do, if you don't, you'll be eliminated. So that was pretty exciting. The five game series in the finals just blew our socks off, right? It was so exciting. It went five games literally to the last second. So I would say we took away the geographical constraints. We said you don't have to be east or west. You must be the best at what you do. The top eight seeds rose to do that. The final two, it didn't disappoint. As you watch, Indiana, I think, may be the best example of this, the transition period from having Tamika Catchings and all she met on the floor to the fever to now in a front office position and, and doing some broadcasting as well. And that's not unique to the fever. You look around the WNBA and they've got a lot of their big names that are staying with their teams in some respect. Someone in your position, what does it mean to have those stars want to stay involved with the league once their playing days are over? So it means that we have organic and institutional knowledge that we can retain. It means that it keeps the league consistent in many ways. Those players, whether it's Tamika here in Indy, Penny Taylor in Phoenix, Aaron Phillips in Dallas, Swin Cash in New York, you didn't know I could name them all just <laughs> that quickly. Those are iconic players. So they know the game inside and out on the hardwoods. Bringing them to the front office brings some continuity of face to the league, but more importantly, continuity of knowledge of the game. So when those folks are talking about developing new players or talking with our sponsors about who we are and what we do and how we do it, there are no better ambassadors or spokes 
people than those iconic players. So it is a tremendous thing that we are growing our talent organically and we are leveraging that talent on and off the court. We've seen how strong a partnership the NBA and the WNBA has been together. And, yeah. and an example here, of course, the Pacers and the Fever. Yes. When you visit a city like Indianapolis, a team like Indiana that has that kind of partnership, mm -hmm. what does it provide a, a team like the Fever? So every team that has a big brother, if you will, an NBA big brother, it provides us with a bigger platform because we are talking about basketball 24 by 7 by 365. Mm -hmm. Big brother is playing and then here comes little sister. We are always talking about basketball. It's a sport that we love. I mentioned earlier, it's a global sport. You can play it indoors or outdoors. Young women, young men, it's an inclusive sport. It doesn't get any better than that. So a bigger platform to talk about the game that we love and that we play so well. Tonight, the Indiana Fever take on the New York Liberty here inside Bankers Live Fieldhouse. Over the last handful of years, this has been a big matchup, a big opponent. They've had playoff battles before. I'm not going to ask you to pick a winner, but <laughs> your thoughts here as we head into one of the bigger games on the season here for the Fever calendar. The winner is the fans. The fans are going to win because there's going to be an extraordinary game tonight. When you see that amount of talent from the Fever and from the Liberty, oh my goodness, it doesn't get any better than that. This has been a rivalry in the past, but the talent that each of the teams brings to the table, the passion that they bring for winning, these are competitive young women. They don't want to just lie down and take it. They're going to fight to the very end. The winner, the fans. WNBA President Lisa Borders joining us. Thank you so much for your time and welcome back here to Indianapolis. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me.